Worship, fellowship, and enjoy. So if we can get started, I'd like to ask Brother Anthony Tracy if you would come up and open with prayer. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Father, we thank you that you have given us life and we're here today and we're still on top of our grave. We thank you for life. We thank you for all the goodness you have been, you have given unto us. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your pro the protection that you have over our lives, our children and our loved ones. And know your word said in everything we must give thanks. We give thanks in the good times. We give thanks in the bad times. We give thanks whenever it's a time of refreshing or whatever it's a time of distressing. You're still Yahweh. You're still on the throne. We just want to honor you and glorify your name today. As we come today, Father, we ask for a special blessing. And we ask you, O oh Father, to be with those who are moaning and those who are hailing and those who are going through a difficult time. But as we come today on your day, which you have given unto us, you say, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And Father, we ask that this will continue to be a place in our heart where there is a place where we can rest in you. So today we pray, O Father, for peace and for rest. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us now worship God with some songs, so if you will, rise. We're going to sing a few songs. Our first song, we'll sing all four verses of When I See the Blood. Boy, a lot of faces out there. A lot of voices. Song 
sing over, or sing off for verse of wherever he leads, and I'll go. <laughs> song, if I can find it. We'll sing all three verses of Wonderful Words of Life.
Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Um, a, a, a lot has happened in the past week, couple of weeks actually. Um, as you know, all, all of you now uh, know the news that on uh, Thursday, uh, Pastor James uh, took a well-deserved rest. Um, we we got the we 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 were getting word to lap for over a week that um, he was not doing very well down in Memphis, and um, <coughs> Brother Steve, who's in the back, and I we were privy to a little bit more uh, information that we wanted to kind of keep you know to ourselves out of respect and privacy. Uh, for both Pastor and uh, the entire James family. Um, but on Monday, uh, Brother Steve called and he said, um, I'm getting on a flight because Pastor wants to see us. And I said, Does he? I said, okay, where was his exact words? Now, because I know you didn't talk to him directly. But, um, but he had been speaking to Myra. I had been talking with her and I said, well, and, and so, um, you know, uh, we are we are two very individ very different individuals. So he flew down, I drove down. Uh, we have we all have our preferred modes of transportation. Um, so I'm a little bit weaker in faith apparently when it comes to uh, getting up in that plane, but that's okay. Um, you know, we had information. We didn't. We, we weren't sure how much of it was accurate or not. So. But we know hearing from Myra directly that he wanted to see us, well, we had to answer the pastor's call. Um, it doesn't matter um, church affiliation. He was our pastor. And to be, you know, quite honest, for the, you know, for the last uh, 13 years, 12 plus years, one thing Steve and I had in common was that uh, he was the closest thing to a father that we had in the in the physical realm, because both of our fathers were, were no longer with us. And so uh, we were able, fortunate enough to go down there to spend uh, spend some time with him. Um, uh, I, both Myra Bo, uh, and Tony, passed, one of Pastor's sisters, you know, ex expressed their thanks for us coming, but I mean, there was no other option for all that he had poured it, into us. And to come to represent a church that we served for so many years, we, we had to do this. Amen. And so, um, so we answered the, the, the request. It may have been more of a one-sided conversation in terms of what we were saying. Steve and I were able to do a lot more of the talking. Pastor was able to maybe give, you know, give a word here or there. Um, you know, he, he was very unwell. You know, I want you all to understand that um, he had been battling for years. You know, when when he left here a few years ago, he was walking a, a lot more upright than he was uh, the last couple of times that, that, that you had seen him. OK, so when I came in there Tuesday into the um, ICU and, and he was awake and I, I, I asked him, I said, I said, hi, pastor. He said, hi, pastor. So I said, okay, he's still, he's still there. And then I asked him, I said, how are you doing? And he said, I'm tired. And, 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 and I know what my dad said that, 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 you know, shook me. And when he said it, it shook me. But I understood it, but we can't we be greedy sometimes? Can't we? I want you. I, I I know you might be in that bad suffering, but I still want to lay eyes on you. I want to be able to talk to you, even if you can't talk to me. But I'm so thankful to the Most High for allowing myself and for allowing Steve to be able to be there. And, and for multiple reasons, I am glad that he was able to both see and hear the two of us together there. Amen. Amen. 
can see last year Steve was ordained up in Lansing. A couple years before that, I was ordained right here. Myra said that he talked about us so much, Steve and I. She was like, I don't know what to say. It was like, you, he was like, you were his two most, he was most proud of you two. Like y'all were the, his two best mentees, if that's a word. Mm -hmm. And to know that he talked about us in that way, mm -hmm. meant a lot. And he cared about this congregation I understand that for for him to come in here the way he was bent over in a lot of pain doctors talking about doing hip replacement surgeries and all of that and he still said i'm gonna come up here he's always said his heart was here in detroit it was just a month ago i was talking to him and he said i'm gonna be up there in detroit first two weeks of january but it's a good thing that I had this week so I could be there next to Myra because Myra said, yeah, I was there for that conversation. And when he got off the phone, I told him, you know, you can't, you are in no shape to go up to Detroit. <laughs> he was in no shape to come up here in, in October for the feast, but he did. He was in no shape to come up here in September when we had friends and family weekend, but he did. He was in no shape to come up here uh, Pentecost weekend. But he did. Not only that, but he preached the sermon, I think is the best sermon I heard him preach in maybe five years, maybe even longer than that. If I could have a, a Mount Rushmore of sermons from Bronson T. James, it was up there. It was so memorable that, that and God just has a way of working things out, that yesterday when CGI sent out their email, they sent out an email to the ministry. They also posted on their website uh, a write-up on Pastor James. They included a sermon on that page with the, this announcement. And it was from right here. Not an armor of God, not a sermon he gave somewhere else. But they went and took our took the sermon that we put up on our YouTube page <laughs> to put on the website. He wasn't standing behind a lectern. He wasn't up on a stage somewhere. He was just sitting right here. Because the most important thing was that he was given the word of God. Amen. The title of that message, if you may, in case you forgot, was Jesus is the center. Amen. Had us all in here singing Richard Smallwood, crying, you know, in, in here. But that was Bronson James. Dialysis, taking, taking his strength, all kinds of other issues, but he still knew that Jesus was at the center of his joy. Yeah. Now this week, this was the most, most time I've been able to spend with Myra James. One of the things that she said was, I thank you and the church for all of the support that you have given. And she was not just talking about prayers. As most of you know, Pastor James was on a stipend when he was here, serving. When he left, the natural mind for some was to say, oh, well, he's out of sight and out of mind. Well, her, doesn't that go to you? Whenever anybody asks that question, I said, he needs that more than I do. Because there are things that he shares with me. There are things that he has shared with Steve. There are things he shared with the deacons that we all don't know. But I knew he needed that. Come on now. He used to be on a full stipend and CGI cut it in half. I'm sorry, cut it out completely until uh, an influential person, uh, you know, <laughs> shook the right uh, pockets, I guess. <laughs> and then this church stepped up in a way that not too many other CGI congregations do and giving him a stipend. That's good. This man gave his life to the church. This man sacrificed marital bliss for the church. This man sacrificed 
uh, uh, relationships with his children for the church. So he deserved and earned every penny that he got from this church. Every penny that he got from CGI. And I would say he deserved even more than what he got. So Myra said thank you for all of that. Amen. Now, <coughs> we're about to have, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the floor for the testimonies for y'all to share. I mean, there's a sermon to, to come later, but I remember when Marilyn Williams passed away and Brother Steve took that microphone and it was being passed around for people to share about her. That's what we do here. It's different. It's not according to the script or the schedule, but that's okay. And I want some people who may be here may not have had an opportunity to know Pastor James or know him for as long as some of us to really understand how much he meant. Because Steve prayed for him to come and he came. But not only did he come, he stayed. And because he stayed, we're here today. Amen. All you Bible scholars in here to get on my last nerve sometimes can you think you're so smart. <laughs> A lot of that's because of the, the, the tutelage and the, 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 the lessons that he gave. I want to read something from the CGI website. And Rob, I put a picture I want y'all to see this picture that I that was on the website of Pastor James. Mm. That's what he looked. That's what he looked like with hair on his head, and when the hair was mostly black. I want to share now. There's a whole write up on the website. You can read that at your own time, but I want to just read what someone posted in the comments below. Someone by a, a woman, Gloria Moore, said, I was blessed to know and work with Bronson when he was a student at Ambassador College in Pasadena. Y'all know that was a long time ago. He sang at my wedding. He was a very kind and humble man. He has traveled many miles and grown richly into a multifaceted servant of God since that time. It's wonderful to see how he developed his God-given talents to further God's purpose. He leaves a large footprint upon the earth, and we are blessed because he walked here among us. His family can be well pleased. Now that's just one person. People can tell you when you go somewhere, you mention Bronson James' name, and you're around, you know, a bunch of Sabbath keepers. All of a sudden, they remember a song, they remember a wedding, they remember. I mean, there, I mean, I, I even learned something new about some part of his pastoral history before church today, which I wasn't expecting. So, I'm not going to put anybody on the spot outside of the deacons and Geraldine, because I told Geraldine beforehand that I would that I might call on her, and she didn't volunteer. <laughs> and I didn't think you were going to volunteer, so I'm, I'm, I'm just going to pick on you right now. But um, we don't have the wireless mic available, so um, you don't have to get up if you don't want to and come up here. But I know if you want to share something, we would want to be able to hear you. So um, if you can come up, that, that would be appreciated. Um, if not, um, Deacon Horton, Mother Dexter. <laughs> Are you a, are you a blessed sight to see? Yes, yes, yes. Mm. God is good. I'm going to stand for this. Um, I'm just very thankful to be here, and believe me, I've known Pastor James since he was possibly 20 years old. Now I'm probably kind of dating myself. I don't mind that. But uh, when he went away to college, to Pasadena, 
and I've known him all through his time at Pasadena College and singing with the choir there that he sang with and traveled. And then it came around to my husband and I had left worldwide and we came to CGI and um, thanks to Steve, Pastor James, they got us into CGI. We were not exactly for that, but speaking with him, I, I, I just can't even think and tell you all the things that he did for us. Uh, he helped me through my husband's funeral. I couldn't have done that. I had no experience and I had just done so much with trying to keep him alive that I, I, I didn't think about the um, funeral. But this is what he walked me through everything and did all of this. And just uh, coming over to see my husband when he was sick and uh, then my husband fought with <laughs> CGI to make sure they were giving him the stipend that they were. It started back then because he felt he really needed it. And it, it was just everything. He was very close with, with Pastor James as uh, George knows how yeah, he was a fighter, I'll have to say my husband was, and he was into trying to get everything to build the church and, and to uh, get everything in here that we needed because I think he's the one, we had a friend who had a uh, store in here and we ended up getting the permission to lease under her and then we moved on to getting it through this building. And so all I can say is we were blessed to have him with us and we are just, we can't help but just love him and his family because he gave up so much for us. And thank you. Not a whole lot of people working on it. To what uh, Deacon Horton says there, uh, that was the closest thing to a brother that I had. I didn't have it, but I had four sisters. But anyway, when he came here in 02, uh, best friend before that passed away right after that. So I was always had, I've always had a brother, actually. So, but Brown said, I heard Herb said a whole lot. He would come by the house once or twice a week, We'd sit there and talk about this, that, and the other. If anything I needed to know him about the Bible, he would, which was his lot, he would let me know right away. And I said, well, there's a Bible scholar. I don't have to write the title or pass the name for anything, title especially. <laughs> but I met him in uh, 1972 at the feast, and we've been best friends for 50 years. So. There's not a whole lot more you can say about that, except, like I said, he come by once or twice a week. And one time he came by, it was 05. And we're sitting there talking, and he's getting ready to leave. And he says, you know, I'm going to ordain two deacons this, this Sabbath. I said, oh, yeah? Who he got? He said, Marilyn Williams. Marilyn Dunn. I said, oh, very good. That's a good choice. He said, I said, who's the other one? He said, you. <laughs> <laughs> I almost gave him that Gary Coleman routine. You know, <laughs> what you talking about? <laughs> but I didn't. And I'm sitting there and said, what's he talking about? Me? He could have could found anybody, as far as I was concerned, because I didn't, you know, speaking, doing whatever. Uh-uh. I was ready to just sit there and rather drink in whatever somebody else was saying. So, really and truly. So, like I said, he's a, our brother. He's a brother to me all this time. Now, I don't want to pick on anybody, especially when I didn't know they were going to be here today. <laughs> um, but Brother Steve Sandy, I feel like it would be an incomplete day if we don't hear from you. Now, do you, do you need some time and want to hear some other folks and you can close this out? Okay, that sounds good. Um, before I go and, and, and pick on uh, Sister Geraldine, is there anybody else? I would 
All right, man. <laughs> the next. Hey, man. Happy Sabbath, Jim. Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. It is so good to be here. Amen. Amen. I'm trying to get through this without tears. <clears throat> tears are okay. So January 15th, 2015 was the first day I met in person Bronson James. I grew up uh, under a Baptist church. And um, in about 2005, things that I had learned over the years, I began to manifest. And I saw a program called Arm of God. And there was this man, this booming voice, Bronson James. And I appreciated everything he said and it made so much sense that I was converted completely then but I couldn't find a church and I didn't look very hard at the time I have a son who most of you know us Jeff in 2015 we found out that there was this Sabbath keeping church here in Southfield called CGI Detroit. Ronson James was the pastor. So I said, well, I found who I'm looking for. My son had a friend and his name was Steve Sandy. Mm -hmm. And Steve Sandy had invited him to his church over and over again. But my son said, I'll get there, I'll get there. So we're driving up and we're thinking, well, I found Pastor James. He said, wouldn't it be something if this is the church that Steve's been trying to get me to come to? <laughs> and sure enough, as we're pulling in the parking lot, we see this big black SUV. He said, hey, it's Steve. I said, well, maybe. I said, you know, I don't believe in coincidence. That's right. But God has a way of working things out. And we came in, came down the elevator. First person who greeted me, Deacon Horton. Mm -hmm. And we became best friends and sisters. But I've met so many others and we've shared so much. The one thing that sticks out is how Pastor James had a nick for picking out personalities. We had been here the very first day strangers to the church no one else knew us he didn't know us and there was a situation going on i don't see charlene i know she was here recently charlene handled the bulletin and uh, she was going to be leaving for a period of time and he was asking for volunteers for someone to help to uh, keep the bulletin going while she was away. And um, we looked around and no one was raising their hand. I used to own a printing shop. <laughs> so bulletins, all sorts of printing were nothing new to me. So at the end of the service, um, when he came to greet us personally, I told him, you know, we can help with the bulletin. He called Charlene over, he said, here's your helper. <laughs> you did. Just from me saying I could, he didn't know for sure, he didn't know what he was getting us into, but it worked out and I'm so proud to have been able to help at that time and 
I know that God is going to allow me to be able to come on a regular basis. It's not to that point yet. I'm still dealing with quite a bit, but I love you all, and I love me some Ross and James. <laughs> Thank you. Um, there is somebody in this, we said there's no such thing as coincidences. There's a gentleman a couple rows behind you who uh, was not born and raised here, but has a story that is very much one where you can say there is no such thing as coincidence. Yes. I, will, I want to invite Brother Fintoni Tracy to come up here and, and share a word with us. Uh, thank you, Pastor Herb. <laughs> um, Bronson James was a man in his own time. I'll take you a little bit before I go to that testimony. He came to Jamaica about 10 years ago. At first, I laid my eyes on him. What you don't know is that there was like trouble in the house. The pastor down there was about to get dethroned. And there was a group of people that was trying to dethrone him for many reasons. Not that he was guilty, but there's always war and fight. Bronte James told me when I came here, he said, no one in Tyler wanted to go to Jamaica to deal with the issue. It was serious. <coughs> Nobody, Bill Watson never want to go. Um, Van Tinsen never want to go. Bronte say he did it. I've never seen a man function the way he did. Because when he came there, what was going on, when he stood up to speak that day, it was like, he handled the situation in such a way like, we the professional and it saved the pastor, because the pastor testified about it. He saved his whole ministry and the scandal and stuff like that. And I heard he spoke in a way that it was very, very um, humble how he dealt with it. And he solved the problem and the church remained in the hand of the pastor. And he didn't even knew the effect that he had on that congregation when he left here 10 years ago. And when I came here, I was telling him, he said he'd never know. Now, how I came to this church Pastor James is the one that took me here. When I came to Detroit, I never know where I'm gonna find a church to go. The guy that I was working with is like, one day I happened not to have breakfast one morning. And I don't know, but it was always in the plan of God. Now I know. The guy just pulled up at the restaurant. And as he pulled over, just pull up at the restaurant, because I tell them I need something to eat. We were sitting down here. When I look over, I saw this man. Now, 10 years ago, or it was like five years ago, because it's four years now since I'm here. His face just hit me. And I look at him and I said, he heard us talking and he could hear the Jamaican accent. And he asked a question like, are you Jamaican? Do you know Pastor Boyne? And I said, when I turned and looked at him, I said, are you Brunson James? He was shocked because, you know, how I know I, I know him because he doesn't know me. So he was shocked and that actually sparked, just, just light him up. 
he gave me his number and he told me he coming to pick me up on Saturday. That was like my dream come through. Okay, I was at home keeping Sabbath for several weeks. I've nowhere to go, just read my Bible or something. It was boring. You remember the first day, I don't know who remember when I walked through the door with him. He took me to church and he took me back a couple of times. It's like how it happened, it's like God placed him there at that church. Remember, he gave you the testimony. All these years, like for just one purpose, I did have to meet him there. And shortly after, it's like his work was over. I told him you could not stop going to that restaurant until you meet me. Because <laughs> God placed you there. Shortly after, he, he left to Memphis. And there's so much good things about this man, which I will not spend much to say. But what I want to say to us, you look at his life. And if he spent 50 years to his life in the church, he served within his timeline. He fought a good fight. He finished his course. You know what I'm saying to you? He, through him who take me here, that's why I'm here. And I don't take it for granted. It's a spirit led and I'm not walking by sight, I am working with the Spirit because I want to take up where he left off because it is God design, as you can see. It is not our design. And as he touched your life and you two leaders, you can see, watch what he did. He lived his time. He carried the button right on to the end, fought a good fight finished the faith and there laid up a crown of righteousness to him i'm saying to us let us be the same example for someone else who all we need to do is to carry on that bottle that that carry on the mantle just as he carried on mm -hmm. just the same let us not give up let us stick it out let us be humble let us be overcomers let us continue. He's another patriot. He's carrying on his time. I always said this. It's like I was seeing, I was seeing like every one of us like is given a hundred year period to take on something. Nobody can fill your space, Steve. Nobody can take your position. Look, nobody can take his. Nobody can take Bronson James. Do you see he was the one carrying something? You might say God of millions of people. No, he have you and you are the only one that is called to fit this gap. And we need to fulfill that role. And he is a living testimony to my life. And I'm really happy and glad that I meet a man and as humble as he, peaceful as he. And I hope we all will take, you know, a lesson from what he have left with us. May God bless you all, in Jesus' name. Are there any, is there anybody else that wishes to share a word? Sister Judith. Everyone. I remember over seven years ago, um, we were looking for a church. The church we used to attend, the pastor passed away, and it was hard to find a Sabbath church. So, uh, like, we don't go to a lot of church, and we didn't like what we see. And uh, my husband said, okay, I'm going to go on the internet, and I'm going to try to find a church, see if we could search for a church. And my husband find this church. And at that time, we watched a certain mother and say, Oh, this is a man saying something here. He looked like he really knows the word. 
And um, I watched the message, and I'm like, hmm, he knowledgeable. He know the, he know what he's talking about. He really is a good teacher. And then we come to church here, and we start to visit church here, and he will preach. And sometimes when he preach, I have some questions, because, and I will, after service, I will talk with, he said, Pastor, can I talk with you? I have some questions. And he will open up, and he will dig into the word, and I'm like, I said to my husband, this man really and truly know the word. Even sometimes Ed Quarter might not agree with what believe in what he believes, but he stick to that word. And I respect him to the ground he walk on for that. You don't follow what other people say, but you read the word for yourself and you believe the word and walk in that word. Amen. And I could say for Branson James, he did that. Even though a quarter might not believe believe certain things, but he stick to that word. And I say it's a loss for not having him here with us. But one thing we can say for sure, that one day we will see him. All we have to do, he he is gone. He already finished his work. He kept the faith. All we have to do is make sure we have time to make it right. Let us all make it right so when that day, God could say, welcome home. He's home. It's us now to make it home. I know it's hard and it's painful. Don't want to cry. And it's grateful. But we should rejoice. Because a soul make it home. And it's only time before we make it home. We are in a wicked world. A corrupt world. An evil world. So when one person able to get out of this mess and make it home, we have to pray and ask God, help us God, to get to the place where he is. We will have to worry about no more pain, no more headache, no more heart takes, no more sorrow, because you waited until when that day come when God blow that trumpet. He said, welcome home, my son. So he's in a better place than us. Yep. We might think that it's a sad and hurtful and painful, but he's in a better place than us because we're still here. The only good thing about it, we still got chance to make it right yes. before he can come back. We still got a chance. We have another day to ask for forgiveness. We have another day to cry out to God. Amen. And ask him to forgive us for our sins, known and unknown. Amen. So let us take this moment and, and see God more. So when that day come, he shall say, well done, my child. Amen. Okay, um, I know that uh, there were some uh, words of <clears throat> um, some words that were shared uh, from other uh, leaders from some other churches. Um, so before Anika comes to do that, I just wanted to just see if there's anybody else that had any. Mr. Charles. Happy Sabbath, brother. Happy Sabbath. I just got so many good memories of Pastor James. It's this almost every word out of his mouth was just so loving and kind. You know, it's this so sad that for him to be gone, even though he's gone to glory and in a better place, as my wife said. But I give him several testimonies from behind this lectern. And, uh, some of them was comedic. I was able to show my comedic side, and some of them was more serious. But the most emotional one I gave was when I told about the senseless act of violence that took my father's life. He was murdered in the, you know, random act of uh, violence. I got to keep it together here. But um, 
Pastor James came up, I wanted to uh, ask for, for people to pray for forgiveness, for me to be able to forgive the people who done this to my father. Because I know I can't be a believer and not pray for their souls. Because God still created them. And everybody got a chance to plead the blood. So I asked for uh, y'all to pray for me for that. So Pastor James gave a sermon that day. And he came up and he shared a story of how when he was a young boy that he was molested by an older man. And he told how he was able to forgive that person, even to the point that he was able to go to that person's funeral. And after the, ser after the sermon was over, at the end of the service, he told me that he shared that because he wanted me to know that it's possible to forgive no matter how badly you was violated. Mm -hmm. And I can't think of being violated worse than that. You know, my father was murdered, but I mean, yeah. this is a terrible violation that Pastor James shared. And he didn't pull me in the office to the corner. He shared it publicly from this podium. That's how much he loved people. You know, and I always remember that from him. And I can remember um, when I first started going to this church, it was me, I think, Brother Charles, Pastor Steve, and it was another individual. We was all sitting there fellowshipping. And um, I mean, these are the hard hitters, people that's been in the word for like decades and decades. And um, me, I was relatively new. I always went to church, but I really lived the life of a worldly person. I was what you would say, a church goer. I didn't start really starting trying to walk this walk until about 2012, which was about four years before I came here. And they was talking stuff that I'm like, wow, these guys, it's like way over my head. I can't open my mouth here at all. You know, I, I just gotta be quiet. So Pastor Steve said, uh, Charles, you've been quiet. And I said, I'm just listening and taking everything in. <laughs> so privately, I shared it with Pastor Steve that, uh, you know, I had to be quiet because y'all brothers is like way into the, you know, word for further than me. So I was just sitting there learning and taking everything in. So when Bryson James left the first time and he came back, he told me, he said, it's amazing to see the growth in you. And for him to say that, it just meant so much for me. And I just want to say, Pastor, we love you, we miss you, and we gonna fight that good fight so that we can see you again in the kingdom. Amen. Yeah, I want to say, I don't think, I, I don't know if I've ever really heard a, a criticize a word from the pastor toward, toward, towards me, or really towards anybody, you know, when you're, it's, you know, when I was just starting out and speaking and everything, that was the one thing that I was like, I, I, I knew if he would have come down on me, it would have, it would have crushed my soul. I remember the first time, <laughs> there was a time I would, and he never, I don't know if I, the only criticism he ever gave me was, and it was, it, 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 it was, I guess it was his way of criticizing. He said, you'll calm down eventually. <laughs> you'll, you'll, that'll all get out of your system. So that, that was the closest. The, the time I gave a sermon. I'm so glad Steve is here. <laughs> I, gave, I gave a sermon. And I think we only had the two girls at that time. And I mean, this was maybe like the second or third sermon I gave. And I mean, they were off the chain. One of them was flipping upside down and everything. And I wanted to wring their necks. And so, so, so see, nothing changes with my kids in these later generations, right? And so we went in the, you know, so we went in the back. And uh, it passed, you know, so it was like, you know, Steve, Pastor James in there, and they're like, okay, what are the, you know, I'm there to get my, you know, my my, my lesson, what did I do wrong? And, uh, you know, Pastor James did his, so, you know, you'll calm down eventually. I'm not worried about that. And then you would say, well, whatever you don't know, you'll learn it eventually. So I'm like, okay. But then, uh, Oh, I made this huge, oh, I cannot believe I did this. But Steve was like, well, you were chewing gum. And I was like, yeah, no, I, I was like, I was up there and I knew it was there and I didn't know how to properly get rid of it. So I was trying to disguise that. But then, that, but that was it. Then Steve, then Steve goes, 
Man, your kids were wild, though. They were out of control. You know, they can't be like that. And it was almost like Pastor James was forced to not say something because, you know, you can't, can't leave Steve out to hang, right? You can't leave out to cry, right? So, so Pastor James like, well, yes. <laughs> uh, back in Pasadena, we tried to, do, you know, he was like trying to tell me, like, you know, try to set the kids nap time to be run time, church started, you know, and I was like, okay, you know. Yeah, all I can say is thank God Pastor was the pastor and not Steve. Because I would have, look, either, either, either I would have quit or, or I would have met Steve in a dark alley and it would have been over. Because <laughs> the first time I gave a sermon, I thought I did good, you know. Steve, you know, Then I gave a sermon. I wasn't expecting to give a, a sermon. You know, I thought I was going to give a sermonette. You know, it's my second time speaking. And, you know, th and this was back in the day. The church was the, the church was less mature back then. So if they knew Pastor James wasn't speaking, we weren't seeing a lot of people in here. I mean, the kids outnumbered the adults. And think of and just, just think about it. This was like 2012. OK, there were less Sandys and there were less Sandy Hansons in, in, in the church. OK, so the kids still outnumbered the adults. I was shaking in this like mostly empty room. And afterwards, Steve was like, Herb, what happened? You were so good with the sermon. That what happened this time? And I'm like, I need Pastor to be here when I when, when I speak. He never he never gave a criticizing word to me. Unless uh Steve was apparently prompting him, right? <laughs> But there was one time we had a SALT meeting, and SALT is our servant leadership team. We had a meeting one Friday night. We are talking about how to improve services, and I thought I had permission to speak freely because the, the, the hymnal songs came up, and somebody said something, I think, you know, that was like, we should sing more praise and worship. And I said, oh, if we could just get rid of these hymnals, the next time we sing a Dwight Armstrong song will be too soon. Pastor James was sitting right there at the head of the table next to me. And he sits there and he said, Dwight Armstrong was a friend of mine. <laughs> and I knew, oh, why did I say that? <laughs> I was so, I, I, but that was, that was, that, I, I think that might have been the closest I got to seeing like the, uh, the, the bad side of Bronson James. But can I tell you that to have a mentor like that. <laughs> Steve and I talk all the time about the MAP program that CGI has. And I'm sure other congregations or other church organizations have something. Can I tell you that there was no apprenticeship, no workbook to help Steve and I with what we had to do here. Oh, and there were not there were no book reports that you could write to prepare you for going to hospitals to see someone, to pray for a loved one, or maybe it's, it's, it's somebody that you don't even know, but someone in the church wants you to go pray for them. There's no books to help you with that. There are no books to help you to eulogize somebody that's been a member of your convert congregation for years. There are no books to help you when somebody comes in and they want to tell you why you need to be saying Yeshua or you're all going to you know where. There are no books to tell you how to deal with people who want to come in here and tell you how the calendar that you're following is the wrong calendar. There's a whole lot of stuff that they don't teach you in booklets, but it's stuff that you have to learn on the job here. Uh, somebody asked me, what is it like being being a, 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 a men, being mentored by Pastor James? I said, it's baptism by fire. Because he put a lot of trust in the people here to be able to carry this church. I know that I would not be as effective as I am today without him. And I don't want to speak for anybody else, but I feel like our effectiveness in the roles that we serve is enhanced, has been made better because Pastor James trusted people. He didn't want to die behind a lectern. He was not planning to die in the pulpit. So he knew that he had to train up people to come up behind him. And we are better for it. Amen. Um, you're ready.
All right, Brother Charles, I don't know which one of y'all is Charles number one or number two, y'all. <laughs> y'all can have that, uh, that, that conversation later. Now, that was a great segue into, you know, I don't have uh, a lot of uh, interactions with, with the, the passing pastor, but I can say this, you know, this whole organization, um, I came in after Steve allowed me to um, have a service for my father who died. And so um, that's how I came in here, you know, do that that relationship that me and Steve have. But coming here, you know, speaking, we would have um, sermon services here, but we have services there <laughs> <laughs> after the meal. I mean, that's where I think uh, the, net, the, the, the meat that we used to get, you know, because you, you had it back and forth versus just here, you just have, it just goes one way. And so, um, Steve would say stuff like that to me was, he says, uh, he said, you need to be up here. I'm like, no, I said, you stay up here, I'll teach down there. <laughs> and so um, Pastor James, he would have short conversations with me. And so he was a, a great character uh, picker when it comes to the word. He laid down the foundation for was going on here. He knew his time was short. He knew that he couldn't pick someone old like him. So he had to look at the youth. Amen. Now I'm not as young as Brother Steve and Brother Herbert, but my spirit is just as young when it comes Amen. to this word. And so I always said, you know, one of the things that was missing in black leadership was that a lot of us didn't know how to pass the baton to the next generation. Amen. Bronson James knew how to do that. I would never have gotten this opportunity in worldwide Amen. to speak from the word. Amen. And I think we all are good, are, are, are blessed that we can grow further than we are right now. Amen. That takes leadership. Yes. And each and every one of us that seed has been planted. So each and every one of us probably will have an opportunity to say what's in their heart because all of us ain't on the same page at the same Amen. time. And it takes a leadership like that man to understand that everyone has something important to contribute. And I thank you. So before we, oh, 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 I was gonna let it slide. I know, I know. Oh yeah. But um, I couldn't let just not say anything. Um, what Charles was saying, he's, I would say, hundred percent correct when he said. Uh, have, I have gotten a lot from Pastor Jones. When um, I remember, I used to be scared of him. <laughs> like this, why? Because I seen him on TV, and it's like, whoa, you know, this man, and he's in my presence. So I had to say something to him. I came up to him. And I was shaking in my boots. <laughs> he told me to calm down. He said, calm, calm down, calm down. And I still couldn't get the words. I still couldn't get the words out. So I was like, okay. And I just turned and walked away. But um, one thing is that I remember I've been going back and forth into the hospital. And he went to the hospital to visit people. And it didn't make no mind if he didn't come to see me. So one day, I'm, I'm up in the hospital, laying on the gurney, ready to go 
It says I'm talking to my mother and my sister. I look up and here he come. <laughs> I'm like, I look. My sister said this one here. <laughs> she says, that's Pastor Jane. I'm like, what? So he, he comes up to me and he said, put his hands on the uh, on the bed and he said, how you doing? And the first thing I said, what you doing over here? <laughs> and, and he said, and I said, you didn't have to come. Yes, I did. No, she didn't, you didn't have to come. You couldn't afford work to do. You didn't have to come. But he did, and I really appreciate him coming to see little old me. But um, I never thought I would meet a person in his family. So much knowledge. And one of the things that I really do like about him, with the knowledge and the education that he has, he can take you down mm -hmm. and talk to you on your level. And I sit back and I watch them. You sit back and then your kids say, you're my brother and stuff like that. And I just look at him like, wow, he is down, I'm talking about down to earth. There's no no person that I know that is more down to earth than he. And when I say I have grew so much, so much, and it's because of him. I, he's incredible to me. And I'm going to tell you something about him. Oh, yeah. oh, he reminds me of. I said, you know what? He reminds me of Moses. <laughs> I said, you remind me of Moses. Mm. And he said, Because I watch TV, I watch Moses so many times. And I said, and it's, I mean, he just, I can explain about that later on. But uh, when you can go and talk to him and know that whatever you say to him, it's not going to go away. That's incredible. house so I stayed at his house when he was in Chicago I knew his sister first we went to church in in the 70s mm, could been 73 74 something like that and you need to know all the James sit on this side in this one row in the back. And you notice that, you know, you go a couple times, you're like, why are you sitting in the back like that? They all were sitting there, and everybody knew this JJ. It was a lot of them. Okay. And so I got to know his sister and whatnot, and I was a cheerleader. Yes, I was a cheerleader. <laughs> this what knows. And uh, they said, uh, Melanie said, uh, you need to uh, you need to stay with us. Why don't you stay with us? <laughs> They're my brother. I, I didn't know who a brother was. You know, I knew who he was by oh, oh, this one. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I didn't know. So I go and I stay at his house and outside. And I met him and, and, and his wife. And then, uh, I don't know 
the great bell when I came here. I saw him. And I just stand outside all the time waiting for my lad. So he comes out. And I look at him. I said, uh, hi again. He was like, hello. And I said, I know you. <laughs> he was like, yes. Like, of, you know, of course you know me. And I said, no. I know you. And he looked at me like, I said, I stayed at your house. <laughs> and he like, he looked at me like, you stayed at my house? I said, yes, I stayed at your house. You used to live in Chicago. And he draw back, and I said, I know your sister, <laughs> now. And then he's like, oh, oh, wow. I don't remember, I know you don't remember. You know, I said, but I did. Yeah. You know, like, then when I told him that, that's when he got like more like, who is this girl? Who, who is this woman? And he started getting to know who I was. And it, it was, it was just a pleasure to know him. Yes, that's all. We'll, we'll finish up with the uh, the Sandy siblings. <laughs> Good afternoon, brethren. Good afternoon. I wanted to just bring greetings from the elders and the pastors and the brethren who have sent something specifically to the congregation. I won't read them all uh, for the sake of time. But I just wanted to share because they wanted to let you all know that they're praying for us. So first, and I know Steve will mention Aaron Baker, but Aaron Baker and his wife, Lori. Aaron is elder in the Church of God Fellowship, and most of us know him. Uh, Jim O'Brien, elder from the Church of God Cincinnati. Stephen Scales, elder from Church of God in Jamaica. Robert Ansando. <laughs> elder in the, one of the CGI churches in Kenya, Pastor Robin Moore, First Baptist Institutional Church of Detroit, and then his uh, Pastor James's wife, Myra James, wanted to pass on her love and condolences as her uh, shared. She wanted to let us know that how much she appreciated us and wanted her, us to know that she's also praying for us like we are praying for her. Um, his sister, Tony Gibson, Deacon Gibson's wife, um, and um, she also wanted to pass on that same love so that we knew how much his family appreciates the love that we've had for Pastor James. Uh, Carmen Kincaid from the Church of God Fellowship, Tiffany Lively from CGI in Medina, Ohio, Adam Boyd from the Church of God in Memphis, Tennessee, and Jeff Reed and Mike James, both of who are elders in congregations around this in um, other parts of the country. And then we had some of our um, alumni, people that we haven't seen in a while, who wanted to send their love. Uh, Deacon Jasper, Tom and Donna Mellig, LaRonda Triple, Gwen Smith, Charlene Montgomery, Bibifa Irina Dokieri, who we might see in the spring, she'll be back um, from college, um, and Gail Triple. They wanted, again, to let us know that they are praying and that they are missing us. And so for my brief, um, just to talk about Pastor James, there's a few things. There's many things I could share. I just wanted to share a few. One, as you guys know, he was a strong champion of women using their gifts in ministry. I don't need to say anything more about that because you guys know it's, it's quite a thing to to do that and he did it well and he was known for it. There are people who've contacted and said, hey, we saw you had women praying and we've Amen. never seen that in a CGI or you know congregation like this. And so he was just a firm champion. Uh, he went about it as wise as a serpent and as harmless in a dove, as a dove. And so in some cases that meant he couldn't do all that he wanted to do. He believed in, in more using of the gift, but you know he did it in a way that those who felt led differently, weren't offended, 
and because he believed in us all operating in love. So if I know you don't believe something, I'm not going to push it on you. But, you know, maybe God will warm your heart and open your heart to it. <clears throat> and so I feel blessed to have been mentored by Pastor James, because as so many have said, he knew how to recognize the strengths that people brought. He knew how to recognize their gifts. And he was the type of leader who was willing to take a chance, whereas some leaders might have a tight rein and they're very, I can only let you do these things if I know that you will operate in certain ways. And Pastor James um, wasn't like that. He was willing and you could stumble and he would help you and he was willing to do it that way. And I, you know, and he taught me. The body of Christ has many members. And so it's okay if you are one who likes more control, as long as God is in control of you being in control. And it's okay if you are one who's okay to let others have their way, as long as God is in control of who you're letting have their way and how they're doing it. And so I just appreciate him so much that he placed me and Herb in the congregation under Pastor James. We have been richly blessed and God has ordained it that way, and I appreciate it. Thank you. And finally, if uh, Brother Steve will come up. Uh, as he's coming up here, I, want, I also want to give Steve thanks because, you know, we were both down there in Memphis this week. And um, when we had talked maybe around like one o'clock Thursday afternoon, and Steve was gonna put something out on Facebook, including apparently a picture of us and our masks smiling. Um, that, was, that was fine, that was fine, that was fine. Um, and so I said, okay, I was a couple hours from home. And then um, maybe about an hour later, he called me, you know, to tell me the news he had passed. He didn't want to call me on the phone while I was driving. Um, but you know, I, I'm here, so I was able to hold it together. But uh, what he did though was he started making phone calls. So I'm very appreciative of Steve doing doing that. Uh, you know, Steve was making phone calls, and Nika was on the other side, you know, texting and and, and, and answering calls as they came in. Um, and so um, it was it was it was um, it was it, it was a, it was a very interesting week. And I'm thankful for his help on Thursday, but I'm also thankful that the Lord allowed the two of us to be together. Um, we went out to eat like Tuesday night for dinner. I can't remember last time we, we I paid by the way. I just wanna let that be known. Well, no, 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 no. You know, some people will be surprised to hear that. Okay, so that's why I'm just throwing it out there. Even I've, I've grown up a little bit. Uh, people know I like free food, so uh, so I, I I did. So, I, but we 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 went out. We had a, we had a, a good time, and it was an opportunity for us to to talk and and you know we were able to spend that time together Tuesday and Wednesday, which I mean it's it's amazing. I told Steve to be able to actually have time away where there's no distractions from you know we love our children, but you know we didn't have distractions. We had family distractions. We somewhat had work distractions, but but we were still able to spend time together. And so that is something that I value, that we were able to spend time together and we were able to spend time together uh, with our pastor. Um, so, Brother Steve. Hi, everyone. Hello. It's, um, it's good to be here with you all again um so one thing herb did which or elder herb um did which i don't know if he's been following pastor james as closely as he thought because you know what happens when you give Pastor James a mic. <laughs> you could be here for a while, right? That's what mentored me, so. <laughs> um, growing up in the church, Pastor James was very different 
from most of the other leaders, pastors and preachers that um, I encountered. And I had some really good ones. Um, Mel Dahlgren, when we first came to this country, gave my mom a car so she wouldn't have to uh, take the bus because she was driving all the way out in the uh, suburbs. So it's not that we didn't have uh, loving, um, approachable leaders, but he set um, the standard with that. Um, to the point where <clears throat> once I started um, in ministry, uh, I would look and I, we would have our meetings and a lot of it would be questions. So, so pastor, why are you allowing them to do X? Why are you allowing them to do Y? <laughs> Did you see this? Did you see that? And a lot of things, um, if they only bothered him a little bit, he'd say, you know, let it, let it go, uh, they'll grow. If it bothered him a lot and he saw my point, he said, you have a good point, go deal with it. <laughs> so um, I learned to deal with it. When I first started attending um, CGI, I was 17. And we met at the airport every other Sabbath because we did not have a pastor. Uh, and Deacon Jasper was our uh, host all the way in Canada. And that's what we did. All six of us, then seven of us, and then Rob came. And there was eight of us, and then Tom came, and there was nine of us. Um, I said, I can't do this. I can't do this. Uh, we need a pastor here. So I started praying. I started hounding Pastor James. Started hounding CGI. Doing everything, you know, that, that um, I knew to do in order to get that done. And I was pleased when... I got the call from him. You've been praying. You've been wearing me out. I'm gonna to come to Detroit. I was ecstatic. Um, at that point, um, Deacon Horton, the Hortons, started uh, attending. And I want to thank the church first of all uh, for supporting the pastor, uh, not just his leadership, but supporting him uh, financially, supporting him with your prayers. For a small church, over the years, we have done so much Amen. Amen. that Pastor James Amen. knew that we loved him and we support supported him in a way that I think is very unusual for a church of our size. Um, and, and, and that that was very important to me um, because when Pastor James first came here, so you understand his uh, humility, he took a job as a substitute teacher. I don't know, Deacon Gibson, he, he can be the witness um, for that until um, James Pollitt on the board and Mr. Fritz, who um, was a very big donor to CGI, um, along with Deacon Horton here, persuaded them to um, put him back on salary. And I think it was only half salary. It was better than nothing. And then once this church was able, we were able to provide Pastor James with a stipend. We were able to provide him with housing. We even um, purchased automobiles for him twice. That makes me feel really good because Again, he didn't come here with that uh, agenda, with, with the talent he had, with his name recognition. He could have gone to lots of other churches and made lots of money. 
and been asking for jets. <laughs> and the sorts of things that we see some men of God do when they pursue money. <laughs> but he didn't want that. He wanted us. So his humility um, was something that always stood out to me. I don't think, in fact, I'm, I'm fairly sure, I'm, I'm old enough to understand this about myself now. I know I would not have been successful under any other leader in the church. Okay, I just, I walk to my own beat. When everyone else is going one way, I look kind of like, you know what, I think that way is quicker. And even if it's off a cliff, I'm gonna try it. <laughs> and Pastor James gave me space to do that. I'll give you an example. So the last, the last MAP conference um, I went to, okay, I was arguing with like a bunch of the board members of CGI over attire. What's appropriate attire for when you speak, right? And I'm sitting next to her, right? We're supposed to be a team. And I'm like, he's going to back me up. <laughs> They're sitting there quiet. <laughs> you know what you're wearing now wouldn't qualify. Right? You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. So yeah, it, it, would, it would not have worked. Um, and, and this is what I mean by allowing people to, to grow. We had a um, program called Infuse, okay? And, and, and it was visionary. Okay, it was started by Noni McVeigh, uh, Jordana's mother. And we know Pastor James, like my sister said, supportive of women in ministry, as he should when they're gifted. But a lot of people don't see that. A lot of people think they have to control an idea. Okay, and it was taken over by the church and it hasn't prospered the way it did. The only place that prospered was here in Detroit. Yeah. And that's because of Pastor James. We did soup kitchens. We had very successful urban gardens. I'm talking about you would have to bring crates to get all the food that we would grow and give away. We had outings here. I got a call from Carmen Kincaid at, at, at Church of God Cincinnati saying, you know what? I like that you guys are doing uh, your winter weekend down there, but it's preventing some people from coming down here. <laughs> I said, you know what, theirs is bigger and it's, uh, so okay, so so we stopped it. Like we, we used to have fun. We'd go for ice skating and things like that. Rob would be dressed up nice, and like the, 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 the best skates, the best jackets everywhere. And he'd just sit down and um, drink his, uh, Hot chocolate. You come escaping? No, man, I'm good. Same thing on the ski trip. He got the best gear. He's up, up in the lodge with my wife. She's pregnant. She's not skiing. What's your excuse? And Pastor James, he didn't even um, come to those things. Not all of them. But he supported them. He supported them and he set a culture and an expectation for the rest of the congregation to say, even though these young people are doing things that we don't traditionally do, these are the kind of things we should be doing. Right. So I want you to yeah, support them. Amen. So it was easy yeah. for us to, uh, for it to be supported. That's a testament to Pastor James as we continue to grow. When Pastor James um, left for the first time and we had that conversation, I was extremely nervous. I'm not ordained, and he's going to leave me in charge of this church. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. 
that's not what I prayed for. I prayed for <laughs> you can come here so we can have somebody in charge of the church. <laughs> no. I'll stay back there and I'll say amen when you need it. <laughs> you, you first and I'll support you. But it's that trust that um, he was talking about, knowing that I would make mistakes, encouraging all the deacons who were all much older than me to support me, my decisions, and my leadership. And I, I appreciate that even when um, I said, you know what, this is a lot. Is it okay if I reach out to, to friends and other organizations to help? And, and he was 100% okay with welcoming our friendship and, and, and our brotherhood with the Church of God Fellowship, now, now my home church where, where I serve. Uh, because at the time, CGI didn't do that. They did it to an extent, but there were elders that had problems that I would go to the feasts on non-CGI sites, but they supported us. Our church actually started keeping the feasts in full. We would all get up in these, in the, in these buses, get on trains, do whatever, and we'd all go all the way out to the middle of nowhere, Iowa, and be together for um, a week. Again, made possible because of Pastor James' support and humility. You know, Herb talked about you know the 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 salt, um, the salt meeting that we had, where as soon as he mentioned Dwight Armstrong, I knew it was coming. I was like, oh, he just just Dwight Armstrong in front of Pastor James. Okay, he's not going to be. I was like. You know how he hung me out to dry in the, in the lab conference? It was the same. I was like, okay, you about to get it. <laughs> Dwight Armstrong was a friend. Yes. Um, so we, we did something. We did, uh, Jordana gave us a test that uh, highlighted our spiritual gifts, our talents, and our traits. So we're having all the people that head up the ministries and what our gifts were. So Pastor James, I think it was his, his mercy and empathy and, and those sorts of things, they were off the charts. Everyone else in leadership, not very much. <laughs> So we had like speaking, leadership, organization. We had all that stuff, right? Which, which leaders tend to do, right? You, you have to be organized. You have to pay attention to small details. But it, 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 it let me know that the, the personality of this church and the way we would handle things would be totally different um, without Pastor James. So those are... For if you don't know, I want to let you know what Pastor James um, brought to the table for me. It's it's a lot more personal um, because we spent so much time together, and he was a father to me, um, especially after Deacon Horton died. Um, I prayed for him to 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 to, to come here, and he came. So in a sense, I looked at it as my responsibility to make sure that he was all right, to make sure that this church was all right um, when he was here. And I took that very seriously. Uh, when uh, I saw that the situation was not improving, uh, I spoke to Myra about us you know, coming to see the pastor. I spoke to her about that, and I made arrangements before I even spoke to her about it. I said, Herb, we got to go down. And 
I'm like, yeah, let's book an airline flight and blah, 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 blah. I know it's issues with planes, but I figured this is different, right? So we're gonna, I'm looking for planes and things like that. So I called him up the next day. I said, listen, man, I'm looking for planes. He's like, I'm halfway down here already. I said, what you mean? He said, well, I just jumped in the car and I drove. I said, you what, to Memphis? Um, thank you for all of you who are praying for me. It was uh, very difficult to see someone that I admire, respect and look up to in um, an end of life situation. And you know, when you are speaking to him and you get very little response, so you can open his eyes and, and, and see you. You know, it, it's, it, it was interesting to me. So Herb and I, we were down there speaking with him and he wasn't very responsive and then Herb had to head back to Detroit and went back maybe an hour later with Myra right very responsive then <laughs> um, and then uh, it was um, tough to see him go And go to the hospital and, 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 and knowing that you are really going to say goodbye. But we did, and you know, I just thank God for the time. When you get to, they say this, when you get to meet your heroes, role models, and idols, you get to realize that they're not perfect. You get to see their flaws um, up close. And sometimes, you know, that could lead to conflict. And I mean, I'm not telling anyone a secret. Uh, you know, pastor's desire was for me to get ordained here um, and, and, and be here with her all the time. And it, it didn't happen that way. But I am glad that we were able to, you know, go to my sister's house to have a dinner and start making plans to coordinate events together. You know, we were planning um, to do the Spring Holy Days uh, together. And it's um, difficult that we won't get to do that. So my advice to, to anyone, if you have loved ones in your life, um, that maybe you don't see eye to eye on issues and things like that, you know, try to reconcile. You know, I, I'm, I am very glad that I was able to do that. I'm glad I was able to be there to support Myra um, because Herb had already left and her children could not get there in time, right? I mean, when the hospital called us, it was now or never kind of deal. Um, so Pastor James has passed away, but we will all pass away. Amen. Right? Amen. None of us are here permanently. Amen. And we don't know the date or the hour. It's not always an age thing or a health thing. You know, we're seeing perfectly healthy um, athletes fall out, right? So, so nothing um, is guaranteed, but God is. God is guaranteed. And I am glad that Pastor James had the vision and foresight because he always said, he said, I'm not going to die behind this lectern leaving this church unprepared and it has not and, and he has not now i am i'm going to resume my role temporarily of bad cop <laughs> good cop is over there um you know I, I i don't see any issues but uh my ordination process just taught me a lot about corporate churches 
and I think it would be good uh, for you guys to have some kind of uh, ceremony event, you know, just making sure that it's official that Elder Herb is your pastor so that there's no question um, about that. You have my full support on that, and that I think that needs to be done. He has labored. Um, very hard since I've left to keep this church together and to take you through very difficult times. So um, something that Pastor James also did that I've become very good at is taking liberties <laughs> that, that aren't necessarily um, expected, but, but I, I, I think that that's wise and, and, and that's uh, smart so that it's clear that um, Brother Herb is, is able and capable. And as far as uh, help, he has help within this congregation with the deacons that we have here the men and women that we have here. And this church will continue to grow, become more healthy. Um, yes, and, and if you guys do need any help, we're right up the street. Okay, we were already in talks with um, Pastor Aaron, my pastor, coming down and speaking here from time to time. Uh, and, and, and so uh, there should be no issues on that and yes I said it he didn't have to I don't work for CGI I'm not ordained by CGI and right now I'm very happy when I can say things like that <laughs> amen on that church amen okay um, Pastor James uh, I haven't slept well um, Thursday and Friday were pretty hard for me, um, but Mick Meyer and I spoke a lot. Um, and, you know, like Sister Judith said, Pastor James, uh, he ran his race, he passed the baton. So her can take that up with this church, but what about you in your life? How's your race going? Right? Because it, it, if you want to see him again, you got to get to that resurrection. Right. We mourn, because um, I've lost a mentor, a friend, and a father. But I don't mourn like someone without hope. Amen. I, I mourn because I miss his counsel to say, you know what, Steve, after Herb leaves the room, don't you think you were a little too hard on him? <laughs> no, I wasn't. He was chewing gum. You know he's not supposed to do that. Well, yeah. Well, you could have said it nicer. Okay. <laughs> so I know I need that. Um, or even how to deal with, um, you know, situations with, uh, you know, corporate, the corporate entities. I, 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 I don't have uh, those issues anymore, but it's, it's good having someone with that experience, being on the board of elders and the board of directors of CGI. So I miss that. I miss that a lot. Or even, you know, spiritual debates on certain aspects of scripture that we might not see, you know, eye to eye. On. And it's good to hear someone who is well versed in the scriptures. I think because he is so humble and because he doesn't brag about it, it's easy for people to assume he doesn't know, didn't research it, or doesn't have the knowledge. But I trust me, okay? <clears throat> Even in that hospital bed, he has forgotten more than a lot of these so-called experts know. And he's poured that um, 
he poured that into us and it's been very valuable. So I, I want you to be encouraged. I'm glad that I'm able to be here today um, with you. I, I want to thank Elder Herb for the opportunity to uh, speak. Uh, our congregation, Church of God Fellowship, Aaron and Lori Baker and, and everyone there. They do send their uh, condolences. Um, I spoke with his children uh, and they want, uh, they, you had already left, but they, they want me to know that they do appreciate you coming down there um, and, and, and just the support. So, um, Pastor James is at peace. And we believe in the resurrection. We knew the life he led because we saw the fruit. And that's what uh, the Bible tells us. It says by their fruit, you will know them. Guess what, Herb? Your fruit. Your fruit. Everyone sitting here, your fruit. Because he poured into you and now you're doing, you're living, you're knowing. You are fruit. So let us be a testimony for Pastor James. Let us be the legacy for Pastor James because he gave up money for us. We talked about that. He gave a family for us. He gave us fame for us. So let's follow him as he followed Christ. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Elder Steve. Um, I knew I was giving you an inch, but I left enough runway for you to take the whole mile. <laughs> um, we've been sitting for a while, and um, I want us to be able to um, rise and, and sing voices with voices of praise. So uh, we're going to have a couple uh, songs brought brought to us for uh, praise and worship. So if uh, the Sandy Hansen girls will come up here. They will lead us in that. Please rise. Oh 
I think I say more in these songs than I do any other time. You know? <laughs> you, those of you who know me know I'm not going to be up there very long anyway. So let us stand and have one final song before we call the service. Let's sing all three verses of Yield Not to Temptation. After which we let him need closing prayer by the doctor and he can sing the answer. Father God, we come before you now and we thank you because you brought us into this service. We thank you that we were able to spend time with the brethren, to be refreshed and to have our spirits be renewed. That is why you created the Sabbath day, so that we would be able to refresh, spend time with you, spend time with other saints, be able to put on our armor again so that we can go into the world and represent you. We thank you for all the words that we heard. We thank you for the life of Pastor Bronson James. We thank you that we are able to celebrate all that he did on this earth. We thank you that we know that our, when our time comes, you have given us the opportunity to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. And so we pray right now that as we go forth, that we carry your light, that we carry your word in our hearts, and that we stay faithful and true to what it is that you are calling us to do. Help us to honor one another as saints in the unique gifting and path that you have given to each of us and that we will remember that the body of christ has many members for a reason and that we will give honor to each other and that we will let you be the guide we pray that you will bless the food take out any impurities help that it will be good and nourishing to our bodies help that our fellowship may be edifying and bring us closer to you and we pray that you will take us home safely we pray all of these things through and by the authority of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, is you our Messiah. Amen. Amen. Amen.